This is T with T Quilts, and we're going to be making baked potato soup today. I have already taken five pounds of potatoes. I have washed them and I have baked them at 400 degrees for about an hour and a half to two hours. I did flip them halfway through just to make sure that they got cooked on both sides. I have allowed those to cool. And so now I'm going to give you the rest of the ingredients. So five pound bag of potatoes. And then you're going to need five and one half cups of chicken broth. You can make your own or you can just buy some from the store. I will use about one. I'll use this whole carton, which is 32 ounces. And then I'll add my remaining one and a half cups from this one back there. You're going to need, you should be using cheddar and uh, Monterey Jack cheese. But I'm going to use Kobe and Monterey because that's what I have. You're going to need a bunch of scallions. You're going to cut those up into little pieces. You're going to need two tablespoons of butter. You're going to need some salt and pepper. I'm going to add parsley and ground thyme. And I'm also going to add chives. And then you also need about six pieces of bacon that you're going to cook. And then you're going to chop it into little pieces so I'm going to go ahead and start just cooking six pieces of bacon and then I'm also going to cut those up and then I'll come back and we'll start with the cooking so we are here cooking our bacon not sure if you can see inside this pot but it's there we're almost done Go ahead and pull this final bacon out and then I'm going to go ahead and pour this grease into out of this pot. I want to keep the pot. I don't necessarily have to get every little piece out but I do want to remove the majority of the oil in this pot. So now that I have my pot emptied I'm going to put my pot on low. And I'm going to go ahead and pour in, this is uh, five and one half cups of chicken broth. This is 32 ounces right here, which is four cups. use four cups so I need another one and a half cups and I'm going to use my measuring cup for that so I'm going to pour that in and one ingredient that I forgot to tell you earlier was that you're going to need heavy whipping cream so I've already taken it out giving it a good shake and this is the heavy whipping cream you're going to need one and three fourths cups about 14 to 15 ounces anywhere around there is good so i'm going to do one and three fourths cup and we're also going to put that in and 
we do want this to heat up so now I can cut my pot up and we're also going to add in our two tablespoons of butter right here put that in as well and we want to mix this up so you can see how my pot has a few uh, little dark spots from the bacon that's actually going to give it really good taste so that's why we wanted to keep anything that was in the bottom of our pot okay so now this mixture is going to be heating up and while it's doing that I'm going to start spooning in my potatoes so I have my potatoes that have cooled and I have cut them in half and then I just take a spoon and this is where you want your pot to be on low you don't want it to be super hot in case it pops up and gets you a little bit and I just spoon all of the potato out of its shell out of the skin So I'm going to do this to about two potatoes, so a total of four halves. And then I'm going to stop and start mashing those potatoes. Okay, and what we want to do is start mashing these potatoes into this liquid. And what that does is it helps to thicken it. So remember my pot is on about medium right now and when I see this liquid starting to get really hot I'm going to put it onto a simmer. Because I don't want it to boil while I'm trying to put potatoes in and mash them. So I'm going to put one more half in and then we're going to use our masher again. And you're just going to repeat that process until you get all of your potatoes in. When I do my last mashing, I do try to leave a few chunks. I don't want it all to be very tiny, so I try to leave some larger chunks in here. So I put in my final potatoes, and I'm going to do another mashing. And now I'm going to put in uh, some seasonings, but I am not going to put in salt yet. I'm going to wait and see how much the bacon has put in. So we're going to add some pepper, some thyme, some cloves. And I'm actually going to add the parsley at the end. So 
So we're going to add that later. And then we're also going to add in our scallions that I cut up. And then the last thing we want to add is our bacon. So I'm going to cut it and add it as well. And so when we come back, um, we'll have finishing touches with our cheese and our salt. We'll get to taste and see how much salt the bacon has actually put in. last two pieces and if you're a person that don't like pork you can leave the bacon out the whole bacon step and we're going to stir that up we want to now turn our stove up so that we can get it to boil and then as soon as it boils we're going to put it back on simmer Just want to mix all of this up. So we have everything in here except for the parsley, salt, and cheese. And if you want to do some more mashing, you can before it starts boiling. But I think I'm at a good level. I've got chunks and I've also mashed enough that it's going to have thickened my milk base in here. And this is also one of those soups that is a whole lot better the next day, although I do eat it the first day as well. But I like it much better the second day. So we're going to bring this up to a boil. As soon as it comes up to a boil, I'm going to put a lid on. And then we will be checking this coming back every five minutes for 30 minutes stirring. I can see it bubbling a little bit, so it's it's almost ready for me to put the lid on actually I can go ahead and put the lid on and then we will just turn it down you see I can see it bubbling in there so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a simmer set my timer for 30 minutes And then I will set my phone timer at five minutes and then I will come back and we will after I've done all my stirring we'll come back and do the final steps all right we're back and our soup has been on the stove for 30 minutes and I've been stirring our final step is I'm going to add two and a half cups of the Kobe and Monterey Jack cheese but technically you should be using cheddar and Monterey Jack but you can use whatever cheese you like put some in and stir this in and my right now my stove is still turned on simmer but technically we're done cooking we just want to melt our cheese We've got a little bit more cheese in here we need to get out. We're going to add in parsley. And 
we can also add just a little bit more pepper I didn't add a lot before just a little and we can stir that in Okay, and I'm now going to cut this off. I think all of my cheese has melted. Looking really, really good. Nice and cheesy. And now what I want to do is just taste this for salt. See how much salt I need to put in here. It's very hot, so I'm going to be very careful. It tastes really good. Just need just a little salt. I haven't added any salt at all. So I'm going to add about that much salt. And then you can taste again. The bacon really does make it salty. So I'll have to wash my spoon to taste it again. Okay, so we want to taste it one more time. For me, it tastes really good, so I'm not going to add any more salt in. And um, we're going to leave it like that. And I am not going to serve this up because I just made the meatloaf meal and I just ate that one. <laughs> so, but you would just ladle this up and serve it. And like I said, it's actually better the second day. So I'm just going to leave this on here on the stove so that it can chill so that I can refrigerate. And then tomorrow I will just reheat it in this pot for dinner and then I will take it out and put it into a storage container. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.